show. We're legal with Zoom. Becca and Jessica, how are you both? Pretty good. Good. Yeah. Well, uh, I appreciate you doing this because I know you just scrambled home from school and um, and <laughs> I've caught you before homework, which is great uh, because I don't want yeah. you too tired to do this. Uh, and if I remember homework right, it wore me out. So. Uh, yeah. And luckily, I haven't had to do a lot of homework lately, so uh, <laughs> we're going to keep it that way. But uh, yes, thank you again for tuning in. And for the folks who are joining us, welcome to Did You Know That, the YouTube channel where I get to talk to interesting people about interesting and sometimes annoying topics. But this one mm -hmm. will be strictly interesting. Believe me, uh, there's a lot going on between those two that you're looking at. We'll get into that shortly. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button somewhere below my finger. And if you click the bell, you'll be notified when new content becomes available. And if you are a returning guest, I thank you for your patronage. So my name is Sean O'Rourke. And when I am not talking to interesting people, I am a cyber liability consultant for an insurance brokerage firm headquartered in New York City. And Beckett and Jessica, now it's your turn to tell the fine folks who you are and what you do. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Bucket Flannery, and I'm 11 years old. I live in Maysville, Missouri, and I run a business called Beckett's Bark Bites. And Jessica? I am Beckett's mom, and that's what most people call me, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Beckett's mom. Um, and I, I do insurance, health insurance and Medicare. Mm -hmm. um, and then I help out at a local tax office. And then I help Beckett Spark Bites in my free time. <laughs> uh, when you find that five minutes or so of it each day. That's right. right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, first, I do want to show that I've got my Mizzou cup. Technically, it's my wife's Mizzou cup, but I've commandeered yeah. it for myself. So uh, <laughs> I'm representing today. So <laughs> you, Beckett, you highlighted why we're having this conversation, because your mom and my wife were texting back and forth, and your mom rightfully was lauding your exploits as a business owner. And I thought, wow, it's 11 years old. You can't shave, you can't drink, <laughs> you can't drive, but you've got a business. So what is Beckett's Bark Bites, first of all? And then why did you start it? Because that's actually the more interesting story. Uh, well, we make dog treats, Bark Bites. Um, we've been doing it for almost six months, yeah. I would say. Yeah, six months, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and we started it because um, of our church and we wanted to, I wanted to go on a mission trip after my mom did it. So we were just thinking about random things you can do like bake sales, but I mean, everybody does bake sales, but you don't hear of a person that does dog treats. So we started making those and within like the first night, it was crazy. We got like 60 orders. So we had to work like eight hours a day just to get it all like filled out. And um, we thought it would take like, you know, at least six months to get all the money saved for it, um, $2,000. But within not even a month, we got it all saved. So we just started to, or I didn't want to end it there. So we just kept on going. And that, so, um, and, and we'll go, we'll, we'll talk about sort of your, your philanthropic side of yourself. But right now I want to talk about the entrepreneurial side of yourself. So this is an official business. You're actually making money. Your, your mom and dad are going to have to deal with a tax situation in a few months and what have you. Mm -hmm. What's been your, your thoughts so far in your first six months of owning this business and running it? What's been your experience and how are you finding it? Well, it's really difficult because, <laughs> you know, you have to deal with like, the Department of Ag and all of that, and you have to getting registered. We already got registered, but you have to get getting registered, just staying organized. And whenever you have all these bags of treats, you have to know who they go to and stuff like that. So it's really hard. And then, you know, stuff like that. Well, you're kind of a mini Amazon when you think about it. You're taking orders <laughs> and you have to fulfill the orders. Unlike Amazon, though, you have to make the dog treats. And folks down below 
in the episode notes will be links to Beckett's YouTube channel, where you'll get to experience some of uh, his culinary work in creating these dog treats. Um, and Jessica, you're along for the ride. So I'm going to ask mm -hmm. you the same question. How are you finding Beckett's uh, entrepreneurial venture? Um, he does a great job. He does do from the baking and the mixing. I'd say he does 95% of that. Um, Christmas was a little crazy and then we had COVID and he was really sick with that. And so he did get behind it, but, um, he does a lot of that. I help come along and help do his like Facebook page or mm -hmm. keep his or his orders organized and stuff like that. But um, it does get a little stressful with school because like sure. a lot of times he's up. Um, well, a few times he gets up at like six to like start his mixing. Then he comes home and does the baking. And so just trying to find a, a balance with an 11 year old is... <laughs> um, interesting that he's very driven um very goal oriented so he makes it way easier i mean you'd think it'd be hard for an 11 year old but he's a very old soul so he <laughs> well I've, I've gotten that impression so far just in our preliminary conversation that we had before we were uh -huh. recording this episode and everything we've we've discussed thus far uh, I don't remember being as well spoken at 11, let alone how old I am now uh, yeah. uh, in this vein. So, Beckett, I got I to gotta ask you now, we're going to move on to sort of why you started it, because you actually have, uh, I've heard multiple stories about your, you trying to help people, not only the mission that you want to go on, but helping people. Um, and I think, if I remember correctly, Beckett's Bark Bites started for not only the, the mission that you wanted to go on, but also because of a friend of yours. Well, we, we really just started it for the mission trip. And mm -hmm. we always thought that if we start a business, then we need to give back. And we need to give back to the people who need our help. Because, I mean, with a business, we're pretty privileged and we need to help other people with things that, you know, that he help with so um <clears throat> one we're like we make dog treats so uh, the obvious thing is we donate to the animal shelter because you know other dogs and cats so we do that we donate to the animal shelter and at our church there's a boy with down syndrome and he what needed to get a service dog and i mean service dogs are a lot of money so we thought that we wanted to also sell shirts before that because a lot of people wanted shirts so we started making those and we just decided to kind of combine the two and do like shirts for will you decided to you yeah. always say we but it's you <laughs> he makes all the decisions <laughs> oh real ceo i like that yeah he like really that. does sometimes i have to put the kaposh on someone like no but yeah he wanted well, to do merch is what he calls it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. And then a friend of ours makes shirts and she said, I have time. And so, and then the will came apart and he said, mom, I don't, I don't need the money. Can we just donate all of the money to him? And I was like, oh, you don't have to. And he was like, yeah, I don't, I don't need it. So that's what he did. Yep. Well, and that's that's sort of how the <clears throat> my interest in this story sort of evolved because that's mm -hmm. the story that you and Susan, my wife, were discussing mm -hmm. one night. She's sitting in bed with the phone. I'm getting ready, doing whatever, and she's starting to to tell me this story. And I, almost simultaneously, we both looked at each other and we said, "He'd be somebody I'd want on the show." Yeah, because I'm. I don't think I'm that altruistic now let alone at 11 years old. So Jessica, I'm gonna ask you first, is this Beckett just being Beckett or was your, the environment you and your husband created sort of Beckett's the product of that? Um, I really think I'm both. My husband and I are, again, we always tell Beckett we're blessed. I mean, it's kind of cliche. We're blessed, but we are. And we are faithful tithers. 
And um, from the get go, I told Beckett, it's not all yours. Like you can make money, but you have to tithe 10% on whatever you make. Um, I didn't necessarily mean to a church or anything, um, but he does know that, you know, um, God provides a lot, but you, it's his money. So sometimes I think he gets it just naturally, but no, he does sometimes blow me away. He kind of makes me feel like a dirt ball sometimes because <laughs> he's really giving. And I'm like, oh, I wouldn't have get, I wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> uh, and he did the other day. And I, I was like, oh, I feel so bad. He's oh, just, yeah, you don't have to, up. because he balances the scales. His excess <laughs> giving away, you know, balances the scales for you. Yeah. Because yeah, he uh, does. Well, it also helps to be eleven years old and have mom and dad paying all the bills still. Mm -hmm. You think? Uh, right, Beckett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't have to allocate for food and shelter and uh, and and what have you, it helps a lot. Yeah. In that front, but. Becca, what drives you to to get up at six in the morning to mix and then when you come home from a full day of school to bake and then do your homework and stay on top of everything else that you have going on? I don't even know. I just really love my business and what I do. Um, I like it because um, I like having other people come over and um, helping like other kids so I can use my uh, finance. Uh, just the other day, we had a boy over and he was helping. Um, so I like doing that. And just so, I don't know, it just feels good to know that you have a business and that you give back and stuff. Well, and that's the thing, Jessica, you said about a tithe. A tithe doesn't necessarily have to go to a religious mm -hmm. institution. It mm -hmm. is merely you taking some of your your gains mm -hmm. and doing something for others with it mm -hmm. um and so from that perspective let me ask you about your friend and the service dog where do you stand on that now i think our final number was nineteen hundred dollars that's what he ended up with and so was he able to get the service dog or is that still yes. in the process? Uh, he, he already got it. Yeah. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's been life changing for their family to have the, to have the dog. So, yeah. Well, there you go, folks. That I could end that show right now and people would have tears in their eyes. So that, <laughs> that is kudos to everybody who got involved in that, especially for you, Beckett, in terms of turning mm -hmm. your business into something more than just a profit center. So now that your friend has had it, what future plans do you have for the money that you're making and continue to make? Because it doesn't sound like Beckett's bark bites are going away anytime soon. Well, I know a lot of future things. We were thinking that, I was thinking that I wanted to donate to like, you know, places like Children's Mercy or places like that, that um, like hospitals and stuff like that because um, I know the struggle of having somebody like with a bad illness in your family. So kind of things like that. Um, other people's mission trips, uh, we've donated a lot to other people's mission trips to Haiti and Nicaragua. Tell me oh. this month. Oh, and at the end of the month, this month, we're going to Nicaragua. Really? Mm -hmm. And what do you plan to do down in Nicaragua? Um, we're going to go to villages and we're going to tell like Bible stories and just teach them about the gospel and stuff like that with their church. Oh, very nice. Well, I wish you a lot of luck when I was growing up because I'm, I'm older than your mom. Uh, <laughs> Nicaragua was a much different place uh, mm -hmm. than it is now. So uh, it would be interesting to hear what your experience is. Maybe we'll do a follow up episode yeah. just so that <laughs> we could get a Nicaraguan report. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't have to deal with Contras and, and communist insurgencies and what mm -hmm. have you. Yeah. So, um, so and in terms of the business itself, where do you have a plan for the next six months, the next year? Do you wanna keep this going as long as you possibly can? Do you have an end game with it? Well, we're definitely gonna keep it as long as we can, but we don't, really have a plan i would say say we just kind of i don't know wing it adapt. 
Yeah, I, wing I, it. Would wing it. Mm -hmm. I think we, I think we call that winging it. Uh, yeah. I always ask him if he has, you want to sit down and make any goals or anything? And he says, no, it's fine. It'll, you know, <laughs> I said, okay. Um, and I think that's okay. You know, I, I do. He does have to do, the Department of Ag is, it, it's a big Ag deal. Ag stands for agriculture, for those who, yeah. who, who may yeah. not be in the know on that. Yeah, um, and they require a lot of recording and mm -hmm. registering of products. And so, and they have to send us products to labs. And I mean, it's it's in depth. And so for 11, he has done it all. Um, but if you go bigger or beyond, it's he can't manage it. And so I think where it's at now and just letting him guide it, you know, it, it's, it's fine <laughs> so far. Well, what if somebody came and said they wanted to partner with you to make it bigger? I don't know. I, um, <laughs> I mean, they can come out and help, but I think we're good, me and mom. <laughs> well, maybe your mom wants some help. If, uh, maybe she wants to help and what have you. Well, so, I mean, like, I mean, probably what every once in a while we have somebody come out and help. My cousins come out and help. So yeah. my aunt, my grandma. But yeah, but we you have gotta, a lot. You got to make sure you name all the relatives so you don't hurt anybody's feelings. Your mom's very <laughs> yeah. smart about that. And, yeah. and what have you. you can yeah. forget friends. Do not forget relatives because you'll no. never hear the end of it. Never. Yeah. Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> would be much different uh, if you forget <laughs> to mention a relative. Yeah. Yeah. He does have help that will come. But for the most part, a lot of times it is just him. And then I go down and where is that? So let's give people a sense of what an 11 year old entrepreneur's time looks like. Um, on average, obviously, because mm -hmm. you were sick with COVID for a while, there were the holidays mm -hmm. and whatnot. But let's just say on average, what does your day look like in terms of trying to fit this all in to 24 hours? Oh, uh, we don't think I mean, every day. But, uh, you know, on a normal business day, we will, like, I get up, mix, uh, then we'll do, you know, a couple hours of rolling and baking. Um, if we don't do that, we'll be delivering. And, um, I mean, there are quite a few people at school that, um, like, teachers that order. So, uh, get to school, make some deliveries, and then get back. So, have you, do you have to ship any of the orders, or is it all local? Um... I don't think we have any regular shippings, but every once in a while we'll, ha we'll, we'll have somebody that um, lives far away that we need to ship. Yeah. He's got some he's getting ready to ship. Well, tomorrow, actually. He's like trying to do those. The problem he has is he'll get a bunch ready <coughs> and then somebody will want a bunch. And so it's kind of chaotic and so then he gives those away so then he's got to get busy to make up the ones he had allocated right. for shipping and so it gets a little hectic so and yeah. you still have to go to school because your mom <laughs> won't let you quit school to run the business right, right? yeah um, i don't even think i would want to quit school schools oh. my Man, I would have quit school at my second day of first grade if i could have run a business <laughs> one of it. so good for you yeah he um, likes it so Jessica, what's your experience been like in terms of what's your average day like when you're helping him uh, with this endeavor? So uh, I usually only help when he's here. I don't ever just do stuff when he's not because it's his business. Um, if we get up and do it in the morning, we get up about six or he'll get up about six. We work till about seven and then he's got to get breakfast, shower, and then he goes to school and then he gets home it just depends between 3 30 and 4 and then usually I'm like okay here's what you need to do here's what you got for today and so then he'll go downstairs and it's like cupido he rolls it out stamps mm -hmm. it bakes it and then you have to what after you bake it you dehydrate take it out take dehydrate them and then bag them label them yeah so it's like every day is a different step 
you know, sure. and then so they dehydrate usually overnight. So then the next morning, okay, get up, you know, you got to bag them, and then it kind of starts over again. So what's, so, it, okay. what's it about two days to to prepare and order? I would say yeah, because uh, you get in the morning, you um, you mix up. Uh, we usually put them in the fridge so they can um, get harder, so it's easier to cut them out. And then um, afternoon, you stamp them out and you bake them. And then whenever those get done, you put them straight in the dehydrator. And the next day, you bag them. Yeah, because you have a video on your YouTube of your dehydrator, which I found quite impressive. I mean, <laughs> you could do a lot of different things in those dehydrators. Do you do other things besides the uh, the bark bites? Yeah, we have things called potato chips, which are just um, sweet potatoes that we put in the dehydrator overnight until they get crispy. Um, we have doggy donuts, uh, which are kind of like a banana bread almost for dogs. Um, and we put them in donuts. We also have them like, uh, we call them cake pops, so just cake pops. And then we put um, yogurt chips on them to make them frosted. Man, your dogs, the dogs eat better than I do. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's for sure. Pretty good. So where'd you come up with the recipes for all this? Did you just make them up or? Um, well, it kind of took a couple of places that we wanted to find the perfect recipe. We had a few in mind and I think we had like three in mind. And then we don't, one of them, we kind of just dropped and we're like, we're not going to have time to make those. We had like a beef one in mind, but we're like, probably not going to make those. And then in the first few weeks of having our business, we had a, a peanut butter pumpkin and an apple mint, but the apple mint was quickly lost because it was just so much work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait a second, let's go back to the peanut butter pumpkin. Can you make mm -hmm. it for humans? Because I'll order <laughs> that. It's human food. I mean, it's all human food. Yeah. It's just um, pumpkin, peanut butter, eggs, cinnamon, and whole wheat flour, but they're not sweet, they're, they're just bland. They're not necessarily gross because they don't <laughs> taste like anything, Yeah. but they're not. I'll tell you what, just throw some powdered sugar in and I'll, I'll order a dozen right now. So yeah, um, just keep that they in the back of your mind. They smell good. Yeah. I mean, they smell good baking. And everybody walks in, what are you cooking? And we're like, dog treats, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, also, I forgot to mention the banana ones. We have banana ones and those smell really good. Yeah, uh, like regular banana treats for like special orders. Mm -hmm. I like bananas too. So <laughs> if you could combine the the peanut butter and banana into something, I'm going. That's, that, that's the banana ones. They don't yeah. taste that bad. I've actually had, I I eat all of them, just to, or not all of them, um, one of each just to see, just to prove that humans can eat them. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, don't do that on website because then it makes it tough for doing sure if the, the humans are eating it. Your mom knows <laughs> all about how insurance mm -hmm. works and whatnot. That's so right. We won't advertise that um, yeah. <laughs> publicly. But so the million dollar question though is, and all dogs want to know this, how do your customer dogs like these treats? Well, most people who um, order, they say that their dogs will give them a bad look or won't even eat store-bought treats after they have mine. Um, I think one person said that they tried to just give them store-bought treats, just go like go back to a normal treat and they wouldn't eat them. Yeah. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. the best. You know what? If you can get that dog to do some and listen to that, I got a phone going on here. Um, if you can get a dog <laughs> to actually give you that kind of review, that would be fantastic. Yeah. You should get you should get a you should get a video. You should see if you could get a video of that to have yeah, we on, on the website and show that dogs won't eat uh, store bought <laughs> treats anymore, but they'll scarf mm -hmm. yours down. How about the Christmas tree? What Christmas tree? You had the stockings and the lady had a oh, yeah. tree. And he had a Christmas special where he had treats and a stocking. And they were bagged, but the late the um our friend had to take the stocking off the Christmas tree because the dog kept trying to attack the tree to get to the tree. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. I think it was the same lady, just a different dog. He like he would spend the entire day just staring at the stocking. Yeah. That's and she awesome. had to like take it down. <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh, again, you got to get a video of this. I would love to yeah, see that. Too. That yeah. would be fantastic. I mean, because I know our dog, 
she gets, I know Susan had put in a very large order and then said, let's use that as a donation, but we're going to put in a real order. Because again, people, we we're going to have a link down that. here mm -hmm. and a description on how people can order down in the show notes. So everybody, once you finish watching this, go down there. If you've got a dog, uh, you now have a chance to overwhelm Beckett and Jessica and, and turn this into a multi-billion <laughs> dollar enterprise. Um, and uh, Beckett will be able to take everybody on a mission, the whole town on a mission. That's right. uh, We're gonna need that. like Elon Musk to get that done. <laughs> you know what, Elon, Elon's got all sorts of curiosities. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody likes him and reached out to you and said, hey Beckett, you wanna come? You want to come do a joint partnership here? Because I think, look, you're doing something that unfortunately they don't teach. They don't teach kids how to be entrepreneurial and what it means to be entrepreneurial, both in terms of the creativity portion of it and the work that goes into it. Um, mm -hmm. And it took me till my first job out of college to realize that I really wanted to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, because what I learned is that I'm an excellent worker, but a terrible employee because I questioned everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, really what I wanted to do was be the general. And so mm -hmm. that's how I spent my life in trying to create uh, situations where I was running my own show. Uh, <coughs> and you've done that early and are getting through some of the, the growing pains and the hard work and knowing what it's like. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're still doing it six months later, uh, I think speaks highly of what you're going to be doing in in, a, in the next 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Look at that Tesla, won't you? <laughs> so how's he done, Jessica? How's he done mm -hmm. in terms of school and social activities and what have you, even while running the, uh, the business? So um, he's a straight A kid. He just is naturally smart, I guess you would say naturally smart, yeah. Um, he was on the academic team. So that was about the only activity that he does. He doesn't, does not like sports, doesn't want to play them, watch them, nothing, no interest. So that very often a lot of time. Yeah, so I do tell people and they're like, why do you let him do this? I'm like, kids spend two hours a day at practice. He spends mm -hmm. two hours in the kitchen. I, he's learning stuff just like they are. So, and then the money that we, his dad and I have in it, which is nothing because he, you know, he's paid us back everything. And then, you know, he doesn't pay us rent or anything, but um, he pays all of his own supplies and stuff like that. But yeah, since he doesn't play sports, you know, I feel like we have the same amount of time and energy into a dog business or a dog bakery than parents do in sports. Sure. So, and it's a lot less getting up and traveling to different places oh, for yeah. you and what have you. Yeah, every once in a while he'll do like a vendor event, um, you know, and just take a bunch of products. So it's a little, it's a little chaotic the night before, making sure he had he's made enough, then mm -hmm. packing and getting him there. But he doesn't do a lot of those. Would you say Christmas was a little hectic? He had a lot of Christmas orders, and we were sick, and so that was a little harder. But we managed. We're, we're a little behind on mailings and stuff, but um, that's okay. Need. I'm I'm yeah. I'm sure your customer base is is understanding. Yeah, he does. He has really great customers. A lot of repeat customers, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. um, and a good community. You know, we live in a great, great place, great community that well, supports well, them. And well, yeah. then that's that's a good that's a good point. How has the community mm -hmm. responded to this? I mean, say? how do your friends, how do your friends react to you when you say, I mean, oh, everybody's I out, I got to go bake dog treats. Well, most of the people, whenever I say that, they're like, oh, I, I want to help. I want to yeah. make dog treats. And so I, that's where a lot of my, that where a lot of them come from, like that boy I was talking about, he was, he just heard about my business and said, I want to make dog treats. I've never done that before. So he came out and then a lot of my cousins are just interested on how I do it. So, I mean... I mean, I don't know how many of them are going to come back, but they're just interested <laughs> about what it's, what it's like. Yeah. Once they get a taste of the manual labor, they're one and done. Is that right? Yeah. He yeah. did have one cousin and uh, it was pretty funny. He worked for two hours and he said, oh, my feet hurt. I can't stand like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, 
Two it hours. Was too much. Much. Yeah, okay. and we I mean he we baked probably eight hours straight before, um, just trying to, you know, catch up. But for the most part, you know, that's not a long day, but he said, I don't, I don't think this is for me. <laughs> well, at least okay. he was, at least he was honest. So, you know, he wanted to be a graphic designer on Facebook and I was like, okay, <laughs> there you go. That's, hey, that's, that's helping you out. I mean, yeah. uh, anything to, okay. to sort of push the message out there. Yep. So um, just to let people know in case they're listening to this as opposed to, to watching it and whatnot, how can people order uh, your dog treats? Uh, well, we have a Facebook page, Beckett's Bark Bites. Um, Which is or down below. You can, uh, <laughs> uh, or you can just Venmo order Beckett Flannery 24 on Venmo. Um, what's your PayPal? Yeah, I'll just Venmo's fine. Okay, yeah, Venmo. <laughs> Venmo's yeah. easier, easier to remember. So repeat the Venmo again. Uh, it's Beckett, B-E-C-K-E-T-T, dash Flannery, F-L-A-N-N-E-R-Y, dash 24. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so people can just pay you straight from there and in the notes tell you what they want, correct? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Right now, that's the easiest way to manage for an 11 year old. I mean, a website would be probably a little too overwhelming. Um, plus, getting too much, the Department of Ag has different requirements. So, sure. This is I a mean, way to keep everything in check, you know, just keep it the right side. We feel like, you know, eventually we may have to do something different. But. Well, yeah, because I got to imagine it. If you get too big, you can no longer be home based. Uh, That's right. You would mm -hmm. have to move into a commercial facility mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to support it. Totally different um, guidelines and insurance and stuff like that. So, yeah, maybe one day you can. I, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm actually that. pulling for you. I I would want that to happen. I I think everybody should run their own business at least once in their lives, and mm -hmm. the fact that you're doing it at eleven makes me terribly envious of you and uh kudos <laughs> for doing that yeah. and for being successful because you could have done it for a month gotten enough money for your mission and then called it a day but you didn't um mm -hmm. and i think that speaks highly for both you and your parents yeah thank you <laughs> so after this let's say you get um let's say you get a hundred hundred orders would you change your mind then about staying in school would you quit school <laughs> and then just start going full-time or is there another number that i mean use? i mean <laughs> i'm really just trying to cause trouble with your mom right now so that's that's all i'm trying to do that's not I, a, that's not a serious question because i think you should quit school tomorrow but again <laughs> that's just me trying to cause problems with your mom so he would be a dream to homeschool because he's like smarter than me i mean he, he just is he's brilliant so i i tell him all the time like i could probably homeschool you now but uh, during covid we didn't fare so well homeschooling <laughs> but now you know it's just the maturity level of him is he's right. old soul, old right. soul. Yeah, he's easy. yeah but there's easy. something to be said with hanging out with people your age and and getting that experience yeah. And, mm, yeah he's an only child so he kind of needs the interaction you know he doesn't do sports he does piano uh -huh. dog. <laughs> speaking of dogs yeah. there you go yeah yeah you can what's, um, what's your dog's yeah. name asher asher is, is asher he's actually your... one of the reasons why we started the business because he got sick by um a store-bought treat that we bought for him. Okay. Um, I think we were just in Kansas City and we bought one and he got really sick and we had to take him to the doggy hospital. So he stayed overnight there. So we just decided, why don't we just make all natural treats? Just one more reason. Yeah, so it actually did start from our dog getting sick because he had to be on special food, special treats. And mm -hmm. then actually that's where the... And uh, that's where the idea actually kind of kept going is because uh, here, I'll turn it around. He's been like bugging us this whole time. 
Well, that's good. He's oh, he's a puppy. There, there, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'd I'd bring our dog in and what have you, but she'd be all wiggly and all over the place and trying to lick the camera and whatnot. So I don't trust her. Yeah. Hey Asher, mm -hmm. how you doing? Can He's I ask like, you a few questions about the treats? Would you would you be willing to give a testimonial? Yes. Yeah. Asher is our arch nemesis in the kitchen because he's under your feet all the time. Oh, I can. Mm -hmm. I, I totally. He's also our number him. one tester. Yes. And he uh, also will sneak them. You know, we have like a little pile when they're drying and he'll. Yeah. Uh, Why did you do I, that? I like mm -hmm. him already. I like him already. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, also my aunt. It was like she's his she's like um guys and she's like i didn't want to rat him out but this is like the fifth treat he snuck and we're like why didn't you tell us uh nobody nobody wants to to rat out the dog you don't want to be a tattletale he's an advent well i'll tell you what beckett i'm i'm totally impressed uh, I'm so glad that you agreed to do this interview and we got around to actually doing it and that you're fully recovered because I know you did get sick with COVID and I'm glad to see that you're, uh, you're back up and running. Thank um, you. And I, I'll tell you, everything that we talked about in terms of ordering is down below. Uh, if folks are out there, give, give the kids business a shot. Uh, I would love to see him running his own multi uh multi-product dog treat uh company for years to go so uh i'm all for entrepreneurship uh, and whatnot and especially if your mom and dad are having to do your taxes and what have you uh that's fantastic <laughs> because then once you need an accountant then it, things really get serious for you and whatnot <laughs> so that's my goal is for you to need an accountant <laughs> thank you <laughs> not a problem well i'll tell you what uh this has been great i uh i think we will do a follow-up i would love to do a follow-up after you come back from yeah. nicaragua because it'll be very interesting to hear your feedback on visiting a place that is entirely different mm -hmm. from anywhere here in the united states and mm -hmm. so um i wish you a lot of luck you're doing that at the end of january right yes January 29th? Yeah, January 29th. Um, and then we get back the next Saturday in February. Okay. Well, I wish you all the best. Are all three of you going, Jessica? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, my husband okay. and I and Beckett are all going. Yep. Yep. Who takes care of Asher? My nieces come over and stay. They just stay in our house for a week. Okay. Every time we're gone, he's a super easy dog. So, yep. Okay. I just want to make yeah. sure the dog's taken care of. That's what I concerned with myself with most. Absolutely. Yes. yes. S2. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's I easier think. to find somebody to watch the dog than Beckett. Yeah. I mean, think, think about that. We have, we do, we have an easier time getting Roxy taken care of than we do with anything oh, yeah. else. So mm -hmm. everybody is yes. volunteering to watch Roxy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If I ask them to help me move a couch, oh, I'm sorry, I'm busy and what have you. But yeah. can you watch Roxy? Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I get That's that. That's so funny. We get that, don't we? Yeah, for sure. Well, this has been fantastic. Beckett and Jessica, thank you very much for doing Did You Know That? Uh, question mark. And uh, I look forward to <laughs> hearing your feedback on how things go once you start promoting this episode and see if business picks up a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Really no excited to be back. Well, uh, then I wish you a lot of luck going forward, as well as on the mission trip. Uh, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in. You've been watching Did You Know That? Question mark. Uh, if this is your first time visitor and you haven't yet hit the subscribe button with the bell, remember, it's somewhere below my finger, depending on what <laughs> side of the screen I am on. Uh, and whatnot. And if you are a returning member and you've already subscribed and hit the bell again, I thank you for your patronage. So for Beckett and Jessica, my name is Sean O'Rourke. And with everybody out there with the dog, make sure you order Beckett's Bark Bites. And if you don't have a dog, you are certainly missing out. And I wish that you would get one in. You can also order. donate to the animal shelter. Don't forget that. There you go. Always yeah. adopt from the animal shelter. Do not go mm -hmm. by. Uh, 
there's plenty of dogs and cats that need a home and uh, plenty of them are at animal shelters and we're all good to go. So everybody out there in the ether, you be well and best kid and Jessica, I look forward to our next conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye all.